We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? The Facebooking and the tweeting and the Instagramming, all that would not exist without our understanding of science. So it's amazing that you took that as an insult. You mean true for you is different from true for anybody else. Have yeah, something absolutely, to because I can't something prove either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Aurelia Radio. This is show 141. Our for um, yeah, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, Friday, January 27th, 2017. 2017. I'm still getting used to that. Where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh really. I'm your host, Andy Cowan, and I have my usual suspects. I've got Stephen Griffith, Amber Besecker, and Daniel Atherton. Welcome back, everyone. Oh, oh so um, I was looking through the news, uh, <laughs> as as I'm like to do for the show, and it it something jumped out at me, and it's something that probably jumped out at a lot of people, and that's that the uh, the doomsday clock jumped forward um, another thirty seconds uh, this week. In fact, yesterday. So I was wondering. It's wait. I remember talking about the doomsday clock previously on O'Reilly Radio. So I went back into my Wayback Machine, and it was on show 42, which was, uh, you know, a long time ago. In fact, it was January 23rd, 2015. So two years ago, and it was about climate change, basically, and climate change being ignored. That's why we moved closer to the brink of collapse. So that's fun. So should you wish to uh, to read up on why we moved forward last time, go check check out Show 42. We've got a little uh, search bar right here on the web page, and you can type in pretty much whatever you want, and uh, and we'll get we'll get you something that we've already talked about. Um, so that's obviously uh, feedback from previous shows. But you know, if we make any mistakes or you have comments on things that we've said for this show or previous shows, please. Share them with us. Go ahead and send us an email at oreallyradiopodcast at gmail.com or phone it in at 470-222-6759. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to talk more about the Doomsday Clock uh, moving forward, but a friend of mine, friend of the show, has been uh, compiling little lists, and I have... Uh, unceremoniously copied and pasted his lists into the show notes. Uh, and this is kind of what we're going to talk about. These are only lists from the last two days. I just want to emphasize that's only the last two days. Um, we're just going to, we're going to read through them. There's 14 items currently, and <laughs> we're just going to, just see if we need to dig in any further with that or just let it go with, oh yeah, I saw that coming. Because a lot of these things we have seen coming. And some of them I don't think anyone has seen coming. Which is frightful. So, number one. Uh, Alex Jones of InfoWars fame, or infamy, uh, has apparently been granted White House press credentials which make his insanity somehow valid for the Trump administration. Let me make things a little bit better for this. Um, this idea terrified me so much that I decided to quickly activate my Google Foo powers. Um, according to The Hill... <laughs> activate Google Foo. From, Go! From a day ago, uh, the White House press office is denying that he that any credentials were offered to conspiracy theorist Alex Jones at website InfoWars. After Alex Jones claimed it in the video, I quote, he is not credentialed for the White House. The White House press office has not offered him credentials. That comes from the White House Deputy Press Secretary, Sarah Sanders. Good. That's that's good news. It terrified me so much. I'm like, no, no, I have yeah. to look this up. Oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, he, he does have an audience and he's claiming that he gets got those credentials. And he claims a lot of things. He does. Yeah, he but claims also, that lizard yeah, people admit, are real, you know. In the current environment, the yeah. idea of InfoWars and Alex Jones getting press credentials, sadly, isn't out of the realm no. of yeah. possibility. Oh, no. Yeah, I classified yeah. it as plausible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is bad. Bad on its own. 
Mitch McConnell says that the Trump border wall will cost $15 billion, <laughs> uh, which is actually on the low side. Yeah, um, I know that uh, Adam ruins everything. They they ran an, a nice little segment on basically how walls don't work. And um, yeah. they estimated, and it has their estimate is, you know, scientifically backed because they actually do some research for that show. Uh, $25 billion. And that's not including yearly maintenance and staffing requirements at all. That's just initial construction. And, and I don't know if that factors in having to purchase private property or not. No, I don't. I Well, maybe it does. I don't know. But along the I don't think it would because of EV actually, laws. Are yeah, interesting. along the border, there is no private property. Well, yeah, it's also, as they point out yeah, there, easements. it's the whole thing of... Remembering, we are, if you build the wall, you are losing at least a mile of U.S. territory and essentially ceding it to Mexico. What I had seen, and I'm looking for the source as we yeah. speak, is that it would be around $20 billion to build it, and that's not including hiring all of the Border Patrol agents and mm-hmm. everyone else needed to hang out around that wall and do their jobs, which would be like another thirteen billion. Yeah, that that is just the construction cost. It has nothing to do with staffing or maintenance whatsoever. Because I mean, uh, you're you're talking a lot of money over and the course of that. The the lowball cost, as 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 put here in the show notes, uh, would be the cost for clean water for the entire planet. Yep. Uh, one large hadron collider. <laughs> The island of Jamaica, or one USS Ford aircraft carrier. I can tell you the military would rather the aircraft carrier than the wall. Yes. Uh, also, I had, again, putting on my, my own tinfoil cap, a better idea to have a wall. If you really want a wall... Mm-hmm. Install more satellites that will go over our border, have more drones, and the people to monitor. Then you have stations along the border with people ready to go in helicopters. There you go. Yeah, that would be lovely. And uh, Mama Van in the chat room, welcome, Mama Van. Um, we have also, uh, she, she's uh, chiming in saying that uh, they already have border control, which of course we do, and plenty of agents, yeah. but apparently that's not enough for... Um, no, not for uh, what he's talking for about. For Trump, uh, because he wants to um, increase that by, I believe it was 5,000? Yeah, it's some insane amount yeah, that he wants to increase that agents. force by. Yeah, it's it's uh, insane. And, and the head of the Border Patrol force yeah. just resigned. Mm-hmm. Well, let's let, let's let's keep going with the list because yeah, <laughs> there's all sorts of things. <laughs> okay, yeah, because we can just keep going and going and going as we know that's what this show is all about. We've got four years. Um, we'll go for well, a while. But speaking of resignations, that segues very neatly into number three. All senior State Department officials have resigned. That's the senior State Department officials, the ones that have been there through multiple, multiple. <laughs> <laughs> uh, administrations. Multiple administrations. Yeah. Um, the well, the the most senior of those uh, was serving for nine years in his position. Yeah. Um, and before that, had been in part of the State Department for decades. Yeah. These so, are the people that have built up the relationships with all the foreign powers that we deal with all the time. They're the ones that have the keys to the kingdom, in a manner of speaking. Understand certain forms of etiquette. The ins know and outs. People at yeah. different foreign offices. They can get people on the phone quick. In another way of putting it, they know where the bodies are buried as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and just a neat sum up. Um, And I mean, not only are you getting an influx of people who are completely unqualified to do their jobs and uneducated on how those jobs work, or in some cases where those jobs are located, mm -hmm. you have the people who are educated on those things and who are qualified for those positions leaving. Yeah. So Um, that's fun. 
it, it was interesting to note that the resignations were tendered uh, the day before Tillerson uh, got a walkthrough of the department offices. Yeah, it's it's difficult to determine whether or not it was something that they decided to do or something that they had been coerced into doing. I've heard both ways, so we're. I'm sure uh, we'll I, we'll read it in their memoirs. I just yeah. I I most definitely th- this is a worrying blow because these are the people who help conduct our foreign policy, and they have as we've said, connections, friends across the globe Mm -hmm. and can keep things under control. Yeah. And now those cooler heads are gone. Yeah. It's, it's difficult for cooler heads to prevail when the cooler heads have left the building. Mm -hmm. So this kind of sabotages our foreign policy, but you know what? This, this is probably the way they wanted it. Which I, I I don't know. It may be more I, I it may be more know. terrifying that way, but this may be the way that they actually wanted it. it They're cleaning like house. To... They are cleaning it's... house. There's cleaning house, and then they're setting yourself up to fail. Some people also set themselves on fire. <laughs> yes, but that's usually in protest, and those are monks. Well, I believe our State Department just, uh, you know, became a little holier than, than they are, <laughs> possibly, something like that. But uh, re- be that as it may, <clears throat> um, they got Rex Tillerson. He has not been fully confirmed yet. Yeah, he has not been confirmed yet. They currently have an acting, as yeah. a lot of them do now, but mm-hmm. yeah. You know, that's, that's a sketchy thing. I just want to segue real, real fast on that. Would you let just anybody act in a role that has better than top secret security clearance? They typically, from what I've been able to research, they're not just anybody. Uh, they typically are of the same party as the previous person who was there, um, and they tend to have the same level of clearance. They just were not a direct presidential appointee. They yeah, but Rex Tillerson doesn't holder. have any clearance because he's a private citizen. Oh, Tillerson. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's I'm, I was talking about the the acting person in place, not Yeah, isn't who they're he trying to confirm. isn't he now acting as that that role? No. No, no oh, he's just getting the tour. Okay, good. Um, okay, yeah, he's thanks. getting the tour and everything else. He's until he's confirmed, he doesn't get any of that stuff. They have somebody who does have all the clearances and everything else and is the placeholder who is there. Okay, the person who was appointed by the former administration is gone. The new person has not been as I've been approved yet, so you have somebody who go, okay, I'm the acting head for now until yeah, uh, somebody else. A lot of times it's a deputy director. Well, yeah, it's somebody given, that, under. Uh, given that all the senior administrators left, it could well be the janitor. I mean, the, uh, you know, it could just no, be probably those and more it about just, the agency than down, 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 yeah. yeah the, well, uh, yeah. the State Department's a, a rather sizable it is. organization. It is. So I'm. It's hyperbole. I hope that our audience knows hyperbole. Well, in this day and age, I, know, I don't we have, know. We have to specify. Yeah, we have to be very specific, don't we? Um, yeah, but I think our, our thankfully our our particular yeah. audience probably are some of the more educated people out there. Let's. This is edutainment. <laughs> this is edutainment. We say it in the beginning. That's your disclaimer. Um, also, as another disclaimer, uh, we may curse during this because some things are really- may. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> There's your warning. Yeah, turn the turn, turn, turn the little ears off it's, right now. Um, it's it's 2017, folks, and every day is a damage report. Yeah. Um. So let's let's move right along with that damage report. Um. Number four, Trump White House senior staff will still have, well, they still have private email accounts and servers and all that, and they're not saying that anything is wrong with that at all now. Yeah, there's Evermore. a number of issues with that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, quick, 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 fun thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. As fun. the uh, POTUS Twitter was was being transferred mm-hmm. for a good long while, there it was tied to a Gmail account. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the the 
UK press figured this out. It was? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I, I don't have to tell those of you out there in Netlandia who actually understand security <laughs> that Gmail is not the most secure thing. No, but you know what? I would I trust Google more than I trust. <laughs> and Trump once security? they actually once the, the, the British press released that 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 story mm-hmm. shortly thereafter uh it was being transferred to some more secure form um as people now knowing tried themselves uh <laughs> to see if it was still tied to <laughs> to the gmail account. i'm just surprised it wasn't like a yahoo or aol account Oh, Perhaps if it was an AOL or Earthlink. Oh, Earthlink. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh. You have to understand it has to be something you can access on a phone. Yeah, you can access considering that. considering pop, most, dude, most pop three IMAP. It, you know, it would work. <laughs> OK, OK, OK. <laughs> Not pretty. Uh, it would work. OK, so um, we'll, we'll get to uh, we'll expand that here in a moment. Uh, this is still two days ago here. Uh, executive orders signed uh, allowing torture again. I, I reopening the CIA one's... black sites, closing America to refugees fleeing the crisis in Syria. Yeah, no. The as for the 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 closing of refugees, that did happen. It, it is clear cut, and it was signed on Holocaust Memorial Day on yeah. a day. Donald Trump refused to say the word Jews. Or anti-Semitism. He didn't see, say either. Um, and I don't know if, if the executive order actually approved torture again. I do know the, the opening of black sites, I think, was covered in the order. Um, but as for the, the regulations on refugees entering or or immigrants in general entering this country yeah uh also we had from uh the the most trusted source of the president fox news um come out with quoting our dear leader uh as saying that christians will get preferential treatment Mm -hmm. now I don't think I need to say this, but I feel I must. There is this thing called separation of church and state in this country. Last uh, I checked. Not for long. Not for long. We're <laughs> we are heading heading for a theocracy here. Yeah. I mean, do you not see it? I see oh, it. No, I we just, see it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just wanting every I, I'm sorry. If I was just going into college, like at this moment, Mm -hmm. I'd be getting a law degree. Because constitutional law is open freaking season right now. Yeah. And you want to make your career? Sue the White House. Um, First Amendment's under attack since day one with Trump. So, I mean, come on, man. You can make a law career... In four years, you can you can be a name on everybody's tongue in this country. Do it. Go. Yeah, I think well, just get, get good at writing briefs on pretty yeah. much everything that comes out of that office. Amicus Curie briefs. Start writing them. Uh, rolling it back a little bit. Uh, while Trump is mm-hmm. very pro torture, um, he has said this article came out three hours ago. Yay, my Google foo is still strong. Yeah, rock and roll. Uh, Trump has said that his defense secretary Mattis can override me on torture. Yes, he did say that. He did say that. Uh, but, and he actually said that in the um, in the interview that he had. Actually, the whole stop auto playing videos. Thank you. Okay. Um, he actually had said that during his interview with uh, his press conference with Theresa May. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Hello, podcast. Yeah. And Sprocket has joined the building. Okay. Um, it demands cuddles. He demands cuddles. So actually, in. Um, he has signed eight executive orders so far. Eight. 
believe it's eight. Yeah. Um, on day day one, minimizing the economic burden of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act pending repeal. That was his very first thing that he did. Hi, I want to put your health at jeopardy. Yeah. Hours after taking the oath of office, Trump issued the executive order aimed at rolling back Obamacare, um, which we'll speak of a little later. Uh, day number four. So he waited a couple days to do other things. Uh, expediting environmental reviews and approvals for high-profile infrastructure projects, a.k.a. all those pipelines. Drill, baby, drill. You know, all that. Um, day six. Border security and immigration enforcement improvements. This would be the wall. The wall. Uh, fulfilling another of his campaign promises, President Trump instructed the Department of Homeland Security to commence immediate construction of a 1,900-mile-long wall along the southern border. <sighs> and add it. Oh, yes. Uh, the, the directive also signaled beefing up the border with an additional 5,000 border protection officers. Which would be more effective than the damn wall. Oh, it will be. Absolutely. Yeah, the wall um, just gives them some place to hang out by and like I, lean I, on. I remember another problem with the wall. Oh, uh, would it be who's paying for the wall? No, 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 no. That Should we'll get into later. comment on uh, that, maybe? <laughs> no, no. The one major problem with how... The wall thing is being written up yes. is it violates World Trade Organization laws. Oh, d does it? You yes, because sure? <laughs> it is being demanded in 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 the 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 order that the wall be made specifically with U.S. steel. Oh, is it? Let's see. Where, where, does that say that in there? Hmm. I noticed well, that they, way they for did, the pipelines. They didn't mention yeah, that. There's th <clears throat> that also for the pipelines is that all these development projects are supposed to be made with specifically American steel. We don't produce that much. That's the first problem. Second problem, especially with the pipelines, mm -hmm. is since the pipeline is transnational. Mm -hmm. and, you, and technically owned by a Canadian company. You cannot make a demand like that to use one nation's materials exclusively. You can't, but you can. And he did, and it'll go through. <laughs> Actually, no, on that, he might be calling it because the WTO. Yeah, but... Yeah, but it's 2017 and nothing matters. Yeah, that that's a rule. <laughs> that... No, yeah, that's we're throwing facts at it. Yeah, man, that's, that's, that's all the feeling still. I'm sorry, that was yeah, a but fact. That actually may I, stop the pipeline from being. No, it won't. No, it won't. You, you know why it won't? Because they've already the created. No, the, they, no, the pipeline. The pipeline. pipeline. Because they've already got the pipe. They already have the pipe. They were just waiting for clearance to build the thing. It has nothing okay. to do with that. They're, they're just going. We've already got the pipe. It's already a done deal. We're not going to say where we got it. Sure. We got it from Trump. How about that? <laughs> we bought it directly from Trump. I know there's no well, conflict of interest there, but he made it in arts and crafts. He actually is a shareholder hand. in the company that's doing this. You know, it's not like there's a conflict of interest conflict here of at interest. all. No, not not at all in the least. But, but, Why is he president? Okay, moving on. <clears throat> moving number on. six. Number and... six. Here. Well, day six. Enhancing public safety oh. in the interior of the United States. This executive order aims to tackle the Ow. issue of undocumented immigrants through deportation yeah. and tripling resources and enforcement with 10,000 additional immigration officers. So he, he's, <laughs> he's creating jobs. He's created 15,000 jobs by kicking people out and building a wall. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? That's amazing. Huge, yes, huge numbers, but guys. He's frozen federal hiring. Well, not for this, because remember, there's exceptions for that. Yeah, but the exceptions are actually primarily for the military. Well, you he's think put these the people are going to be militarized? <laughs> no, no, no. It, 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 these people aren't, technically. Yeah. This is Homeland Security. Homeland Security can't hire. Well, they, they can, they can 
if there's an executive order stating you will hire these people, that supersedes it. And I, it's I would 2017 definitely give that. and nothing matters. And nothing matters. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying with the one beer crack order and the other one, there's probably going to be conflict in, in enforcement and in, in, in action. You there's going to be department headbutting here, which is what's going to make this grind to a halt, which is going to be wonderful because yeah. I understand how bureaucracies work. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Right, sometimes the slow movement of government is what will save you from a very bad decision. Okay, so actually those were the – those were the executive orders. Uh, then there's mm-hmm. memoranda. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, this is the smack it on the bottom and hopefully it will go somewhere. Yeah. So day one memorandum for the heads of executive departments and agencies in order to halt any new federal regulations until they can be reviewed by the new administration. Actually rolling back regulations the Obama administration put into place. will take time, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is a, that's a standard. That's a standard boilerplate for any new new incoming president. Basically, it's like just change the names and, and print it again. Um, so that, I'm not concerned about that one. That's normal. Um, day three was regarding the Mexico City policy. Uh, reinstates a policy that, among other things, restricts U.S. funds to non-government organizations that provide abortions. The gag order. Yep. Uh, number three, regarding – this is still on day three – regarding withdrawal of the United States from the Trans-Pacific Partnership negotiations and agreement, withdraws the U.S. from the massive trade deal. Um, good thing. Yeah, mostly a good thing. Silver lining. Yay! Yeah. yeah. Uh, then there was the hiring freeze. Institute the hiring freeze – of new federal workers, except for the military, contains wide exemptions for jobs necessary to, quote, necessary to meet national security or public safety responsibilities. Okay. Which is a very for... broad definition, uh, exempts military hiring, which accounts for a third of federal jobs. No, I just saw a story that kind of broke my heart a little of somebody who was ten- uh, was supposed to actually start their new job with the IRS mm-hmm. four days after that memo came mm-hmm. out. Yeah. They ended up getting the job though. After, okay. oh, after the, the story got shared enough, they sent him a letter and said, yeah, come on in on February 6th or whatever it was. Okay. Oh, good. Which is good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So then day four construction of American pipelines. Um, yeah. That that's the one that says pipelines should be made u- using us produced materials, um, which again, <laughs> it's not, it's not. It's irrelevant. It's just irrelevant. I mean, the the steel could have come in from somewhere else and manufactured. You know, actually extruded here in the United States. You know, any of these things are possible. There's so many ways to get around those things. It's it's not even funny. So that's kind of like a moot point. Yeah, it's it's just hey for the American workers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff made in China still doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Regarding construction of the Keystone XL pipeline, uh, kickstarts the pipeline the Obama administration had quashed. Shocking. Um, Trump himself said the U.S. would renegotiate the terms of the pipeline, which implies a lengthy process with several competing interests. Lots of competing interests, several of which he owns interest in. Okay. Regarding construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline, prioritizes a controversial pipeline that was subject to the protests, lots and lots of protests, and people it's getting still injured. Going on and they're still there. They're still there, And yeah. it's gotten more. In fact, uh, who is it? Yeah, Malia, Malia Obama. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, is now there. Yeah. <sighs> Okay, uh, streamlining, streamlining per- permitting and reducing regulatory burdens for domestic manufacturing. This requests a plan to make the permitting process easier for U.S. manufacturers. And easing EPA regulations. That does, it, what doesn't specifically say that. It's a memorandum. Right. It, all it is is it says that I want a plan. Go make a plan for me. Build a plan. Make it a great plan. That kind of thing. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> That's fun. Uh, so moving moving right along, 
do TikTok, other things, TikTok. other things that have happened. Yeah. Uh, now, on today, the 27th of January, uh, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists have moved the Doomsday Clock forward 30 seconds. It is now two and a half minutes to midnight. Thanks to Trump's comments on nuclear arms buildup and their use, as well as climate change denial. I don't think we need to go in on that, because we talk about that nearly every episode already. Nearly every show. Yeah, climate change denial, yeah. But yeah. this is the closest the clock has been since 1953. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we stood at Scary the times. edge. The edge of nuclear war. Mm-hmm. This is not a rational person to have near the button. No, and I'm just waiting for him to lift the sanctions on Russia. I think that's well, coming. There's been a pushback. Happen. No, there's been a pushback from McConnell. Um, he's going no. Sanctions need to remain well, on McCain, Russia. McCain too. Yeah, but he's McCain. a human turtle. It was well, the it was human a... turtle actually said something <laughs> right once. Yeah. Well, he said something right. It doesn't mean that Trump's going to listen. Yeah, but he's not the only one that's saying it, though. Yeah. There's there's wide, wide appeal to have that. Uh, and and that remember, who who were the villains that that Reagan slew? But remember, Saint Reagan of the Republican Party, Saint Ronald. How how many Republicans were very, for a time, for a short period of time, very vocal against the things Trump were doing, and then rolled over. This one's a stickier wicket. Do we because... even need to talk about that? I mean, really. Really, that those are facts you're talking about again. Yeah, we're all about feelings. Warm, yeah, the battle we're feelings. fighting is feelings versus facts. Yeah, those warm squishy and feelings, feelings are winning. Yeah. yeah. Well, considering that he mm. he did not take John Bolton as an appointee because he didn't like his mustache. <laughs> I'm serious. Really? This is oh, the I stuff that's it. leaking. Really? Yeah. Must just, it. This is facial hair. He didn't I didn't like... get hired for a job once because they didn't like my my hairstyle at the time. And it was a normal, like not crazy shaved head, half of my head thing. It was like a normal hairstyle and they didn't like it. And they didn't like but, the texture of my hair. So But the, your the job texture? wasn't being a representative to the UN. No, it, was it wasn't being decided upon by the US president. He's making policy decisions based on people's appearances and mm-hmm. we found out the reason that he didn't actually take christy as his vp which was his original intention because he thought he was too fat mm-hmm. yeah. he's making casting choices mm-hmm. not job hiring decisions he so is. do you think they go to a couch before they're <sighs> decided upon Ooh. is that how this goes Ooh. I can't. <laughs> Ooh. actually in, in further news from from further leaks the um, Oval he, Office. He, <laughs> he did not want Spicer as as his press secretary. He did not want him. That well, was actually Priebus's call. That probably would have been a good choice, though. <laughs> well, to, to, to go over what, what happened this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, Trump, in seeing the, the comparisons of crowds... From his inauguration versus the protest. Oh, his ego has been smashed. Um, or his inauguration versus Obama's inauguration. The yeah. 09 one. He flipped his lid. Mm-hmm. And he actually wanted to call a press conference with him immediately. A number of his top aides said no. In no uncertain terms, No. So then he demanded that his press secretary go out there and issue a strong statement. Mm-hmm. Spicer didn't want to do it. Because there is no strong statement on that denying reality. He did not want to do that. But he was pressured by the other senior aides due to the fact it was either this or Trump was going to call a conference himself. So they shoved him to the wolves. We saw what happened. Um, now, after that, you notice that it's not just been him in the room. 
Oh, do, now, you, do you think the handlers are, are coming a little closer, or are you talking people that are riding herd on, on Spencer? That they're, they're riding herd on, on Spencer now, after that, that initial debacle. Mm-hmm. Because usually when you have <clears throat> the press er- secretary uh, ad- address the press, it's th- they're the most senior official in the room. They ought Not to be, yeah. And it has been that way since. Um, no, Trump does not like him. He thinks he performed very poorly. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. And his original intent was to have a female press secretary because we're putting on a good show. And we need somebody who's attractive. We need somebody with nice gams out there. Yeah. <clears throat> <sighs> so, segue, <laughs> segueing from... <clears throat> his meltdown on his uh, lack of performance with the crowds. Uh, Trump is continuing the claim that three million illegally voted. You know, it's, uh, somehow that that's why he didn't get the popular vote because there was an illegal vote there. Um, I mean, are we really surprised that Trump may have performance problems? No, oh. no. I, um, interestingly no. enough, uh, press from Fox News. Um, when this was brought up at at one of Spicer's more recent conferences, yeah. um, he went. Uh, so you, you're meaning to tell me with this three million thing, um, Trump's lawyers quashed Jill Stein's recount in Michigan. Mm-hmm. They went out of their way to quash the recount, right? Which would have shown. If there was any voter fraud in that state, right, mm-hmm. right, right. Well, no. So he, how do you? And he asked, So yeah. how do you explain what your lawyers have done versus what Trump's claims are current? Spicer, you could actually literally see the gears turning and steam escaping from his ears. <laughs> it's like, don't ask uh, me questions like that. I can't answer those. Not with a straight face. And as <laughs> Spicer quickly <laughs> threw something out was well we're only going to be focusing on those places where we didn't contest yeah that he literally said yeah consult the notes of what the deal leader says is acceptable yeah pretty much and he's oh and he is penalizing states where he lost yeah mm-hmm. in no uncertain I mean, terms this, he is holding a sanctuary. grudge yeah the petulant child. And was it, uh, uh, it escapes me the name of who it is on Trump's staff who, I think it's Steve Bannon who's registered to vote in two different states. Oh, there was Actually, a whole, several uh, members there was a whole also, bunch of them, uh, including Tiffany his own Trump. family. Yeah, yeah, Tiffany, that's the other one. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, there's uh, also Steve Munchen uh, who is registered in two states, Yeah, which he and, says constitutes fraud. And yet, no, it doesn't constitute fraud. It constitutes a fraud risk, which is the report yeah. that he keeps citing. And the person who wrote the report goes, no, that's not it what I doesn't said. imply fraud. It implies a risk of fraud. Yeah. That was what the report was all about. Mm. He's showing that at the at worst, he skimmed it. Yeah, really, he did not read it. He yeah. read the at, clickbait headline most, and yeah. didn't go beyond that. At, <clears throat> oh, geez. You know what? I think you've put your finger on it right there. Yeah. Everything that Trump is doing, if he's getting a report, he is reading the headline and using that as the executive summary. Actually, he's not even reading. <clears throat> uh, we have. Oh, that's uh, right. He's having people read them to him, isn't he? No, he's not even having stuff being read to him. He's literally watching Fox News. Mm-hmm. And that's where he's getting his policy decisions. Oh, yeah. Trevor Noah had a great oh, bit on that. Oh, shit. Yeah. In fact, today, <laughs> Fox and Friends, as a joke that was later to revealed to be a joke, but at the moment, they said, well, according to his aides, he, he watches the show. So they said, um, hey, um, uh, President Trump, if you're watching, please flicker the lights over at the White House. <laughs> and then after they came back from the break, showed the lights flickering at the White House. 
I know it was a joke, but considering <laughs> in, uh, at, other moments, at, at other moments, at other moments where he is, he has said things. If you actually trace back to what was on television the night before or mm-hmm. earlier that day, it's the the sources he's citing is Fox News. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This Bill O'Reilly really has, really has said themselves, we are not news. Except when they are. Mm-hmm. As as but they, t- they themselves have said especially their corporate executives have said, we are not news. That, that's about the right exhalation there. Just So Trump pressured uh, national park service <laughs> for evidence about that crowd size, uh, because he didn't think that the, uh, the standard picture from the same location every year was very flattering. So he asked for more pictures, and they just showed it from a different angle with just as few people. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe he needs glasses. No, the, the claim is that with the tarps down there, the reflection of the light made it look like the, the numbers of people there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but the thing is... <laughs> Swamp gas. <laughs> it might have been swamp <laughs> gas. It was probably swamp gas. You're right. There it is. It was a passive weather balloon. That's that's the whole thing. The sun was in his eyes the whole time. You know, maybe, you know, he couldn't catch the fly ball. No. Okay. <clears throat> so moving right along. Um, <laughs> Trump continues to use an unsecure Samsung Galaxy S3, which has been stated by not just my friend, but also news agencies and credible security agencies that it does not meet the security needs of the average teenager. Um, it only matters when Hillary does it. If if I may go back to something that happened across the pond. Please. Um, one Provide context. That, <laughs> one of the things that uh, was a, 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 a giant scandal in Britain was uh, a series of phone hacking stories. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the more high-profile ones being that of a child who who was missing and was later found dead. Um, yet the phone was hacked by a newspaper company. And in cycling through the phone's text, sent out a text making the family as well as the authorities think the child was alive. Now, if mm-hmm. a news reporter with some tech savvy can ha- hack a phone, especially one that's simple or unsecure or as a secure risk as is being stated here, mm-hmm. and this is being held by somebody who has the highest clearance in our nation. The commander in chief <laughs> yeah. of our military uh, services. Let's let's not even put reporters hacking phones. Let's go into okay. foreign nationals and, and foreign interests hacking the president's phone. I seem to remember that <laughs> Uh, President Obama was not allowed to keep his phone of choice and had to use some super secret, ultra secured, hardened phone that the that the Secret Service had made for him. Why is Commander Cheeto being allowed to keep his Samsung Galaxy S3? Because it's 2017 and nothing matters. Well, no. It's because our dear leader has a habit of firing people. (laughs) Andy. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I just can't. No. No. That man tried to give me. You can buy that phone right now for $50. (laughs) No, sir. I don't like it. You can buy it for 50 bucks unlocked. Other than the one I've got in my hand. I fire him. You know, just 
I mean, man, <laughs> at least at least give him like you know a Nexus or something, you know, that that's getting the security updates pushed to it all the time, not I waiting mean, for Samsung to give him a phone that'll explode. You know, couldn't just... we do to him what we do to kids, like toddlers, when they really want to play with mommy's cell phone, and just give him a deactivated <laughs> one that he thinks is posting to Twitter and everything else, and then just the re- real redirect one goes everything to an actual adult. Just redirect no, everything. It's fine. It posts to Twitter, but it has like a two-minute delay, and it goes to a team first. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. Well, that would be uh, ideal. Like, nice delay for a phone. As as mom and. Mama Van put in in, in our, our delightful chat. Thank you, Mama Van. This yeah. is just in our reality show to Trump, and she's not wrong. Yeah, yeah. no. Drollify Zero also in, in the chat room asked about whether or not the three million illegal votes are Republican votes. And it, there are no Republican votes. There are no independent votes. There are no Democratic votes. There's just votes. And he thinks that those votes went to the wrong place on purpose. <laughs> That's what he thinks. Whatever, whoever they were, it doesn't matter. They went to the wrong place on purpose. It's not on, not the purpose of the voter themselves, but the purpose of somebody else. Some Machiavellian plot to make him look bad. Well, the more important point there is that he, it, it's not really he doesn't. I don't think he actually is telling us he he thinks there are three million votes that were voted in dur- in some illegal manner. He's just telling us that he's going to restrict voting rights. Like, well, that's, he's that's, just telling us that's going to be the end result. To that's going to be the end result of it. Yeah, but yeah. I genuinely think that he believes he was cheated. I I, I, I don't think know. this is ego based. The man the man lies. To everything, everyone, including himself. Yeah. Leah in the Facebook comments said we should give him a Melissa and Doug Trump phone. <laughs> Parents know. Parents know the mm-hmm. Melissa and Doug stuff. Yep. It's good <laughs> high, shit. High quality. Never know. Lo- high quality, never low cost, know. excellent value. Excellent mm-hmm. value. And the, the paint is made of non-toxic ingredients. So even when he chews it, it'll be fine. Mm-hmm. No problem. Okay, so um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, dear leader, uh, Trump's border wall w- uh, is revealed to be paid for by us, the United States Yay. taxpayer. Yes, uh, and it will be reimbursed. Hey, hey, how is he going to recoup this by putting a twenty percent tax on imports from Mexico? Uh, actually, we're getting even more re- reports coming from from not Trump, but Republican leaders. Um, OK. Well, I, the, uh, before, before you continue, though, that means a tax on imports goods. Say you want to go buy that case of Corona. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that price is now going to go up 20 percent. And that that 20 percent is you paying for it. So yes. you are paying for the wall. Twice. I mean, part of me feels Twice. like if you're bringing Corona to a party, you should be punished, but. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I, I believe that it's skunked at the factory in Mexico. I hate that beer, but it is rather popular anyway. So. Eh. But no, there's the, the 20% tax is one of the proposals. The other proposal um, is to still try and is, make Mexico pay for it. Uh, no, it's actually <laughs> even more insane. Okay, um, I'm I'm up for insane. This is 2017. <laughs> okay, nothing. This is, matters. What, this is bizarro this is what, world. <laughs> this is what Republican leadership has proposed. <sighs> okay, um, is it an in, in, indecent proposal at least? It oh, it's is, indecent. Hey, tax it, on dick I'm I'm sorry, Daniel. I just have to find humor in this. You can continue now. I'm sorry for interrupting you constantly. It's a um, <laughs> what is a a border. Uh, tax essentially in that for corporate taxes, mm-hmm. corporate tax purposes, any corporation that imports goods, they will be taxed on everything they import. Okay. Now to, to make things more viable for U S industry, they're going to ease the tax burden on corporations that 
export. And this is supposed to, in the short term, raise about a trillion dollars. I, how these people know how uh, math works? I don't see no. how. <laughs> however, <laughs> how most economists are looking at this is okay. That's great, short term. However, the market's going to react quickly. So right now, we import more than we export. As the market corrects itself, we're going to be exporting more than we import, and then we're going to be paying for that on top of the 20% tax, on top of taxes needing to be raised to pay for the wall. We're going to be paying for the wall three to four times. Uh, Twitch users are saying they're getting an echo. Yeah, nothing changed, uh, so I don't know where it's coming from. So if if you suddenly got uh, got the echo... Um, I don't know what happened. I physically have touched nothing. I've just been sitting here face palming the whole time. So I'm sorry. Uh, I am not getting anything on my end. Uh, nothing is going through the, the constant record. So I will composite everything later. So if it is terrible for you and you cannot watch live, I'm terribly sorry. Um, but please catch us in, in post. We'll, um, I will have it yeah, all posted. Yeah, uh, Facebook is saying they're getting an echo too. I don't know where it's coming from. I um yeah, I I have issues with this program sometimes. Especially if it didn't happen and now it all of a sudden happens. Thanks guys. I I don't know. Um but feel free and disconnect. Thank you all for watching and uh and I will go ahead and I will post the show and just keep You're saying keep it's coming out. from someone specific? Probably me as as we have seen in the past. Right. Yeah, it probably would not come from me, but it will come from co-host depending on how it gets processed in the system it's very strange um, um a couple just last thing i'm going to put out there is a, uh, somebody on uh, facebook said that they left and came back and it's gone really well, there you go like they closed out of it and opened it back up and it's fine now that's that's bizarre uh so apparently everyone except andy is echoing yeah because everyone else is coming in on skype uh so that would be a Huh. Weird. Yeah, it, even even bouncing out and coming back in shouldn't fix it, especially if it's going on two platforms. Sorry about all this. But it's uh, 2017 and nothing matters. That's, exactly. that's, that's true. true. Steven. Nothing matters. <laughs> I'm going to get that to catch on. Uh, okay. Um, okay, well, well, we'll work on that continuously. You know, if I if I hit something, you're probably just going to lose me, because that, that happened one time, um, which was weird. Hmm. Hmm. And then I'm taking away from the flow of the show, so I'm sorry, everybody. Um, but we have to carry on, otherwise we're never going to get done. Okay, so <clears throat> um, Trump asserts to Hannity, as he was on the Sean Hannity show, waterboarding is not torture, and it works. Which is the exact opposite of reality. Just, I know, I know. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> and let's not forget the fact that the man who was tortured, a.k.a. Senator John McCain, is going to anybody who suggests torture. Yeah, but yeah. McCain's a loser because he got caught. Yeah. Right. According. <laughs> according. He got captured. According to. to our Trump. Trump. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what what the uh, the Scottish insult was for Trump. Shit gibbon. Yes. There's a lot. Yeah. It was it was great though. So, anyway, um, okay. Well, as as the women's march protests over in London, Trump is is synonymous with fart over there. So we have elected President Fart. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. Okay. Ah, huh. um, Trump's White House strategist Steve Bannon said, quote, the media should be embarrassed and humiliated and keep its mouth shut. A.K.A. the media should read what the state says for it to read, do what the state says it should do, and not think too much beyond that. Yes. You know, like RT and other state media. He wants 1984. Yeah. That's be, why it's now a bestseller. This would be Ingsoc. Again. Yeah. So, mm. 
We've we got well, yeah. new speak this week. We have and new now, speak. Well, and now he wants essentially a dictatorial authority over media. Yeah, and here we have double double think. Uh, Trump met with uh, UK Prime Minister Theresa May, who we've discussed at length on the show as well, uh, for some of her uh, actions. She's a joy. She is a joy. She's a gem, a piece of work. Um, but they held <clears throat> hands, you guys. They did. It was awkward. <laughs> did you see? It, it was, was, she's, it was she awkward. She so uncomfortable. It's the meat cute. The meat cute? No. Yeah, the meat cute. No. You know, like in a rom-com? Oh, God. No. Those are always awkward. Maybe. <laughs> no. No, it's just bad. Was she ever biting her lip? <laughs> What, doing the white man's orbit? Yeah, that kind of thing? No, no. No, no, no. no. The lip bite. When a mm. chick is really into you. Come right. On, Andy. No. no. <laughs> Daniel! <laughs> I, I, I do believe. Oh. I do believe that is his lower intestines trying to leave his mouth like a starfish. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, and then I should not have taken something to drink there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, so that <laughs> happened. Um, but apparently, uh, during the conference, and he went back on things that he has stated earlier about NATO. He's apparently yeah. now a big <laughs> fan of NATO. Yes, he's going to be going to, 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 to London in, in June. He's accepted her offer to go and hang out i mean as much they've as got a fact, date isn't that cute second ways, base yeah fair enough oh god <laughs> <laughs> well andy's not dying oh is, god is anybody else slightly <laughs> concerned by the fact of you know I, I like in certain ways how he comes around so easily <laughs> to good ways of thinking or on certain subjects how easy it is to get him to change his mind and how quickly he does it um, well, the thing is, he hasn't changed his mind. It's he double thinking. He, it thinks the sa- he thinks both things at the same time. He wants it. He both want. He wants our foreign allies to think that NATO is wonderful, and as long as they think it's wonderful, then he will think it's wonderful. But as soon as it is not in the best interest of uh, of his pal Putin, then he wants it gone. You know, he would he would simultaneously sign on with the Warsaw Pact and NATO. <laughs> He'd be happy to do that. <laughs> because conflict of interest, right? Do you yeah. think Putin's texting him on his Samsung right now? Like, <laughs> why were you holding hands with Theresa May? <laughs> no, no, no. No, the, no. Oh, the, call, the call with Putin is actually scheduled for tomorrow. That's true. That's true. But, you know, well, no, the, no, no. But I mean, he's texting. I think he use WhatsApp. Now. Dear Pootie, I had a wonderful meeting today. Pootie and fart. Yeah. I I bet I bet they use WhatsApp because you know it's secure. You know, it's got all that encryption and everything. And stickers, lots of stickers. Lots of stickers. I bet he loves stickers. And gifts. Oh big fan. I had the most wonderful day. Okay. <laughs> Hold hands. However, with the Theresa May thing, another thing that comes from this meeting is slightly previous to, ahead of this meeting Theresa May was talking about um, expanding trade deals with the US after Brexit mm-hmm. and offering up their national health care service the NHS to American insurers so having American insurance companies, Take over their national health care service. Wait, what what? What 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 yeah. what, what? So don't worry. She's she has she has said to the British people, don't worry, it'll still be free. Okay, so wait, she wants like <laughs> she yeah. wants she wants Aetna to cover the national health care service? She wants <laughs> she wants United Healthcare to cover NHS? What is from how I can interpret what's being proposed blue cross and blue shield of britain I mean, what the f- uh, <laughs> is well yeah, to the, the citizens 
they will be able to still go to the emergency room. They'll still be able to see their doctor. All the paperwork will be handled, processed, and the charges will be decided by mm. our American healthcare insurers. Oh, so it's just okay. a way to absolutely rape the National Healthcare Service. It, it'll, it, this will destroy yes. the NHS. It'll ah. bankrupt it in five years. Done. Oh, or less. God. Why? Oh, why, Stephen? Why? Can you tell us why? Because nothing. No, I'll tell you. It's 2017, it's and, oh, nothing and nothing matters. <laughs> uh, a big part of I'm why crying. is because <laughs> okay, <laughs> the, the NHS is costing <laughs> costing a lot more money than they originally foresaw, but that's partly because the pound has taken such a hit globally after voting for Brexit. Beforehand, it was a mild problem. They were having mild funding issues. Now, it is a mountain. Because the pound is the lowest it's ever been. They were going to save 450 million pounds a week. And give it to the NHS! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> but we know that that was all a pack of lies, man! And everybody oh. who said it is no longer in politics. In fact, yeah, here's true. the fun thing. Nigel Farage, Farage yeah. the, the head of UKIP over there. Uh, 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 yeah, that guy. Is, yeah. Coming, is coming to the U.S. and is going to be on Fox News. Really? They're going to give him his own show. Oh, no. <laughs> And the oh. Fox viewer is going to eat it up because he's going to have a British accent. He's immediately going to sound intelligent. Yeah. Because we're programmed that way. Intelligent yep. slash elitist. We still and love the mother country. Trump loves him. Oh. I, I believe this is, oh, oh no. Oh, this is all, all bad. Bad, bad, bad. Okay. <clears throat> This is why it's in the damage report section. I'm take, taking some blows here. Taking some blows here. We're going to, I don't know what kind of damage control teams we can send out for this, but this is rough here. Um, and also uh, the last one on the roundup, though we have not, this is like from earlier this afternoon. So I'm sure that there's more now, but Trump's yeah. ban on immigration from predominantly Muslim countries expressly excludes all Muslim countries where Trump has business ties or investments. Wow. So if you want to make sure that your people can get the fuck out, buy a Trump hotel. Give them a golf course. And a cross and a Bible. But that, that'll, remember, <laughs> it'll remove the travel restriction. Just, there you go. Done. Yep. Just uh, that they all need to wear, you know, Trump branded merchandise from China. Have, have a crucifix, you know, around their neck. Yeah, have the, the have the Bible in there carry on. Made in China. Yeah. Oh, the the red ball caps. Yes, yep. the inauguration caps were all made in China. Yeah, he's so pro U U U S goods. So 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 for American goods, so much. <sighs> so that was the damage report, ladies and gentlemen. Your State of the Union. Such as it is for now. I, as was stated earlier, uh, I'm at in, a loss in other for words. press, the Statue of Liberty is crying. I saw a political cartoon on that uh, because, of course, the you know the the Great Colossus, the the poem, you know, yeah. give us your born huddle masters. Entire your week, yeah. Yes. Um, so uh, they had the little guy, you know, up on a on a ladder and. Painted an asterisk with, you know, some restrictions may apply on that. Yeah. <laughs> I got into a, a nice little Facebook debate, I guess, um, and and mentioned that to somebody. And, and they, they quoted it and said, yeah, so what? Oh, okay. So you don't care about no. anyone other than yourself. Nope. I I understand now. Thank you for yeah, it's, it's putting things in the context for me. 
it's a thing that I've seen, and it makes sense. I mean, Nancy Reagan was affected by this. A lot of people were affected by this, and the fact of the conservatives do not change their opinion unless the negative thing directly affects them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Liberals tend to go, that negative thing should never affect anybody. Yes. That's, that's really it. We suffer from heightened empathy. The ability to put ourselves in someone else's shoes and see things through their eyes and their experience and say, boy, that sucks. I don't want that to happen to you. I certainly don't want it to happen to me. So how do we fix that? Whereas I'm, I'm not even going to say conservative because I think that word needs to go away because they do not know what that word means. No. Um, I'm going to say capitalist because I think that's more appropriate. Uh, the pure capitalist will, is unaffected by that because it does not affect their bottom line. Once it affects their bottom line, they're suddenly very concerned with it because it affects their profit margin. It affects their bottom line. Or their, their particular quality of life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then they can understand. But again, a lot of that, I believe, is selfishness. It is selfishness, though, for their in-group. Mm -hmm. People that are in their inner circle, in their tribe, because a lot of this is also tribalism, people that are in their tribe, they want good things for them. Because... A big capitalist company, they they always take pride, don't they, in saying that they take care of their people. Mm hmm Yeah. About that. But they don't take care of their people. They Well, they do above a certain grade. They do to a degree. They do to a degree. You know, they, they offer something that they think. It's all about feelings, remember. They feel that they're taking care of their people. Even though if they were able to put themselves in their employee's shoes, they would realize that they're still put upon and it's not enough. In well, fact, <clears throat> that little bit that they're giving only highlights how, how little they're giving. And part of it, and this in is something cases. that, it's an argument I was just getting into pretty deeply today, was um, that it's a form of bigotry. And I think a lot of people think of bigotry solely in terms of the dude in a the white dude in a pickup truck with the Confederate Racist, hat and yeah. the and the bumper sticker and whatever and that's bigotry it, it, and I'm like no the more uncomfortable truth is that bigotry can come in a latent form where you know you can say well it's unfortunate that these civil liberties of these other people are going to get taken away but my needs are more important than their rights are the, bigotry. The reason why Liberals are so upset with those who voted for Trump. The mm -hmm. tacit approval of of what he is and what he has said. You may not agree with what he's done, but you voted for him, which tacitly approves everything he said yeah. and everything he has done. Mm -hmm. Typing and define bigotry into Google comes up with noun intolerance toward those who hold different opinions from oneself. That's all it is. Doesn't have anything to do with race. Doesn't have anything to do with anything but ideas. So if if you don't find that idea palatable, if you cannot entertain that idea without necessarily believing it, then you have a propensity to possibly have a bigoted attitude towards things, don't you? By definition. But they don't feel like that. They don't feel that they're bigoted and feelings are the only thing that and, matter in 2017. And that's the thing is that you, you see this also with, this is something I've also had to explain. When people think of rapists, they think of a dude in a ski mask in the bushes with a knife. They don't think of a frat boy who gets a girl way more drunk than she should be while he stays sober specifically to prey upon her. So that's why a lot of people mm. have a hard time saying Johnny, the football player is a rapist versus this dude who was in a back alley waiting to violently hold a woman down and rape her. We have this For perception of 15 people... minutes of action. Was it something like that? 
Yeah. Yeah. Stranger in the Dark Alley versus yeah, the reality of the situation of, yeah, no, it's probably this guy you know. Well, we have this caricature of, of prejudice and even crime um, that it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the extreme of those things. And so that's why a lot of people don't want to lump themselves in with like, well, you know, my dad isn't a racist. He just voted for Trump because immigrants and immigrants are coming here illegally and, you know, breaking the law is bad. And, it, you know, it, we need to stop coloring these things in extremes because people aren't going to own up. I mean, a lot, a lot won't anyway, but most won't. Yeah. Most just won't. We're going to have to start, that... we're going to have to start broadening, you know, the, the perception of these things so that we can have meaningful discussions about them. Yeah. But the thing is, they don't want to have meaningful discussions about them because no. they don't believe that they're well. No, but by I it. even see liberals do this, where they they're like, "Well, no, 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 not my family," and I'm like, "No, your no. family, my yeah. family, for my, that my matter." Family. Like, yeah. you know, don't defend this, please. Our allies need us to not defend this. Our allies need us to name it for what it is, because they're trying to, and we're shutting them down with. Well, not everyone who voted for Trump was a bigot. Uh. <laughs> but they have tacitly approved all of his bigoted mm -hmm. notions and all of the other people that support him that clearly are. And when you put that in power, when you are literally saying, you know, hey, I don't mind if these people or it's unfortunate that these people are going to be have their rights taken away. But this issue to me was more important when you prioritize like that. Yeah. Well, they're a one issue voter. But that's a, a lot of, of them of... are simply one issue voters. And he was the Christian candidate. Even but though that's literally a form of bigotry. Yes. To say, to say, institutionalize bigotry, to say, yes. me and mine are more important than you and, your, you and yours, where civil liberties and rights and constitutional rights are involved. That, that's not a right. That's just your opinion. <laughs> now, I can have an opinion, too, and I'm going to vote that way. I'm not saying they can't vote that way. Well, good, because I did. They need, to be, no. <laughs> they need to be named for what they are, is what Your I'm saying. opinion can be wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's why it's an opinion and not a fact, but we're in 2017 and... Alternative facts, folks. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. There's a song. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes very matters. well with that. Yeah. Okay, so we have a couple comments in the, in the chat room. Uh, Mama Van stated... That I would define much of the so-called conservative ideals as hypocritical. They claim to be Christians, but have no regard for others. Yeah, I can't argue with that statement. And mm. Darla Fazero says the most the most Christian of all the candidates in the election was this social democrat Jew. Yes. Yeah. He was. Um. Uh. Of Going course, with the Christian theme and a you know, little bit of a divergence. Christ was a Jew. I'm just gonna yeah. just gonna say that you know. Yeah, he was. Christ wasn't and a Christian you, because that'd be weird. If you actually look <laughs> at the Gospel of Matthew, it was essentially written as, "Hi, this is how we convert Jews to Christianity," because it was the most Jewish friendly gospel. Um, but mm -hmm. that's not here nor there. Going to the Pope this week. Um, hey, let's talk about the Pope. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what? The, the Pope uh, actually... Why? Uh, well, we're going to the... <laughs> Why, Andy? What? <laughs> Why not? Because SNL was a thing. That's um, true. That's where, that's where that comes from, yes. But uh, uh. the Pope actually uh, commented on the, the rise of nationalism and... and populist regimes and going Hitler didn't take power he was elected and then destroyed his own people mm -hmm. I, I will say that though the Pope is definitely a product of a organization that I disagree with on almost every count he is not an idiot and by all accounts and purposes, he's really a nice guy and wants mm -hmm. good things for all people, like all people. Mm. You know, 
he just has a very particular idea of what's the best thing for all people, but that's kind of kind of his job. I understand this. But overall, nice guy. And a student of history. Given that the previous pope was a Nazi youth. Yes. I I think that was kind of in the zeitgeist at the time. Emperor Benedict. <sighs> so, um, but anyway, I think we've digressed. Oh, yeah. Wait, no, we haven't. We're still talking about Trump, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, I, 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 I tangentially <sighs> compared him to Hitler. Um, <sighs> so, Lone Star, now you see that evil will always triumph because good is dumb. And if you've enjoyed what we've done here today and you'd like to help us out, there's a few ways. You can donate to the show through patreon.com slash radio and get early access to show content when I can do that. Uh, reviews on iTunes will also always help gain audience and, and get us in front of other people. Tell somebody about us that word of mouth advertising it, it it never fails it always works of course also you could maybe secretly uh, put us on their phone or something like that and just force them to listen to us in the car that works too and of course engage with us directly send us an, um, a message on the social media or the electronic mail at Podcast at gmail.com or if they're more talkative sort we've got a phone number 470-222-6759 that's always ready to take your call or your text message thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time with us this has been O'Reilly Radio part of the Random Acts Company this work has been licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, while it still lasts, including the music Rocket and Pemgea created by Kevin McLeod of Incomtech.com. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you in the next part of the show real soon. And, of course, if you're actually already watching live, then, well, just stick with us. We'll see you soon. Why is this our reality? Uh, yeah, yeah. This, this, uh, Should I be reading that National Suicide Prevention Lifeline <laughs> number? <laughs> End the show. End okay, the okay. Show. wait, wait, wait. No, 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 we can do it right now. Ready? Go mm. for it. And if you don't like what we've done here tonight, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255. They are available 24 hours all day, every day, seven days a week. We really hope you don't need them. But if you do, <laughs> call. <laughs>